Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. If you're new to Studio One, this video is for you. I wanna show you some of my common keyboard shortcuts that I use, nothing crazy, nothing complicated, but kind of the basics of how to get around Studio One quickly and efficiently. If you watch some of my videos, I recently got this feedback from someone. They said, your windows are changing and I don't know how it's happening and I feel confused. So this video will hopefully help you understand what's happening so then when you start to do it or you see myself or Gregor or someone else doing these things, it'll make a lot more sense. So the first one I wanna show you, the one that I probably use the most is F3. So the function keys along the top of your keyboard, if you're on the song page, pressing F3 shows and hides the mixer, also known as the console. It's the same thing as clicking this button down in the bottom right hand corner that says mix, uh, but it's just a lot faster to hit F3. Okay. Now this window can be resized and it can look a lot of different ways depending on which of these settings you have set up. But however you have it looking, F3 is how you show and hide it. The second most used one for me is F7. So write these down. F3 brings up the mixer. F7 brings up this browser on the right-hand side. You may have guessed it. It's the same as if you clicked this little button down here on the bottom right. F7 is easier. F6, just so you know, opens the instruments. F7 opens the effects. I use effects more than instruments, so F7 is where I go. Now I can take any effect that I want and I can drag it onto a track and use it, okay? If I wanna hide that again and get some more screen real estate, I can do that. But you'll notice a lot of times I leave this open. Uh, you can resize it to your liking. I like to have it as far to the right as I can while still being able to read what's on there. And then I generally just leave it open, but you can open and close it that way. Next, F4. F4 is pretty handy for opening up the inspector, which is this window that opens up on the left-hand side. You can also open it by clicking this I here for inspector. You'll notice it tells us what the keyboard shortcut is if we just hover over it. So if you're ever curious, how do I open the mixer again? Just hover over here and it'll tell you, F3, ah, right. You can also see it up here, by the way. The console is F3, inspector is F4, browser F5. Technically, the F5 opens the browser, um, but for me, F7 makes sure I go to the effects, so either one will do that. Okay, so F4 opens the inspector. So the inspector is showing us a bunch of information about whatever channel we have selected. So if I select this kick drum, we're now kind of seeing everything related to that kick drum. And there are three main sections. This section up here has a bunch of information about uh, if it has layers or what you might remember as playlists from other systems. Uh, if, it's what, if it's following the tempo, if it's a part of a group, lots of, lots of stuff there you don't have to worry about too much. Uh, here is just a, a single view of that single fader along with all its plugins and sends. And then this bottom section is stuff related specifically to an event. So this, whoops, this here, that is a channel. This is an event. This is another event, if that makes sense. So anything related to a specific event is down here. So if I took this event and I turned it up real loud, you can see it only turns this one up, but not that one, okay? And then also I press Command Z to undo things and I undo things a lot. So if you hear a little clicky clicky and then you see something change on the screen, chances are I just undid something. F4 makes that go away. Now the final one, this one's really fun. If I press F3 to open up the mixer, if I ever wanna solo a specific track, take a look at the buttons on a particular channel. We'll zoom in on this one. There are three main buttons that I use all the time. Solo, which lets us hear just that channel and nothing else, it mutes everything else. Mute, which mutes that channel, and then record enable, which makes me able to record. Well, guess what? Each of these have a keyboard shortcut and these are the easiest to remember. It's just S, M, and R. S for solo, M for mute, R for record. So if I press R on this channel, toggles the record but on and off. M toggles the mute, S toggles solo. Those are super duper handy and I use them all the time. If I say, man, I really wanna hear what these background vocals sound like, S. And you'll notice, because I did it on a bus, everything that's feeding into that bus got soloed as well because Studio One is super smart like that. All right, those are some keyboard shortcuts to get you started. As you can imagine, there are lots more. One final one you should learn is this one. On the Mac, it is Command 
comma on the PC. You'll have to check. I think it's control comma as well. But if you come to your Studio One menu and find preferences, it should tell you what the keyboard shortcut is. This is another one that I use a lot because sometimes you want to get into the preferences window and adjust different things. You don't have to know what all of these do, but if you ever hear me talk about going into your preferences and making a change to a setting, the way you get there is by pressing command comma. All right, that's it. I hope this was helpful for you. Go practice this a little bit. And within, I would say, if you do this consistently for a week or two, it'll start to become second nature. And next thing you know, you won't even realize that you're doing it. You'll just be hitting F3, F7, F4, uh, and moving around your sessions quickly and staying with the music. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. See ya.